Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Sometimes when God speaks a message to me, he gives it, gives it to me in one word, or it's one scripture verse, or it's something, uh, and, and then it's like I, I, I work at putting the pieces of it together. It, 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 other times, uh, he'll speak it just right out. This one here, he spoke it right out to me. And so uh, I was like, thank you, God. I was like, can you just do them all that way? <laughs> you know, but he, he does, sometimes he doesn't work like that. And it's, it's just funny because people think that standing behind a pulpit and preaching a message is easy. It's really not. And, and honestly, even, even uh, uh, when God speaks to, 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 to me, or a message, he gives me a message. It always has to filter through me first. So I just want you guys to feel sorry for me because all of these messages, there's almost 300 messages now. I think we're four short of 300 messages that are all up there on for everybody in all of the world. And uh, uh, just just let me go back to the, to the YouTube thing for a second, okay? If 120 people have looked at our messages uh, in a 48-hour window, I want you to think about that number versus the number of people in all of the world because it's accessible to everybody in all of the world. So of all the people in all the world, only 120 looked, okay, in a 48-hour window, which means that's, that we're just barely, barely touching a population, right, that needs Jesus, amen? And so I just want you to think about that for a minute, okay? Uh, it, 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 and I think about that because lest I get uh, proud, okay? I don't want to get proud, okay? And I just want God to do more, amen? And so let's look at Ephesians 1, verse 11 through 13. We're going to read, uh, I'll read from the uh, King James Version this, this morning. And uh, I believe that this message will touch your heart, and uh, I believe it will change your life. I believe that you'll, you'll never be the same, amen? And so Ephesians 1, verse 11 through 13, it says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <laughs> There's that colon right there. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray right now that you would touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, Lord, that you would come and uh, inhabit uh, every part of us, Lord, that you would change our heart, change our mind, change our eyes. God, open up our, 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 our heart, our, our mind and our eyes and our ears, God, that we can see, hear, and know and understand something new from the Word of God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. The first word I want to I start with this morning is inheritance, right? My inheritance, right, is, is predestined. I want you to think about that for a second. Maybe turn to your neighbor and say, uh, I have an inheritance, <laughs> amen? We have an uh, inheritance this morning, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's an inheritance that we obtained, right? Even I did. I obtained an, an inheritance. It's one that, one that uh, uh, sometimes I don't even know if we understand how that even happened. I mean, when I say I have an inheritance, uh, the first thing you think about is, well, you're going to get some money, aren't you? <laughs> That's the first thing we think about. We don't think about anything else. We don't think about uh, uh, the fact that, uh, our, you know, when I, when I was growing up, I, uh, my parents tried to love me. I mean, I was uh, unlovable in a lot of ways, but they tried to love me and they tried to show me love. And in a lot of ways, uh, my part of my inheritance is the love that I received uh, growing up. Part of my inheritance was uh, uh, how you uh, bake a cake and uh, or how uh, the tradition of, of Christmas might happen in our in, in our family or or uh, how how Thanksgiving dinner is served or or the fact that uh, we sit at the table and we have to pray before we eat and uh, uh, or, or we have to do this or that or all those other things so some of the inherited inherited things that I have in my life are good things amen and some things are bad things amen and it's true it's true in all of us because we have good things in us and we have bad things in us. Uh, amen? And so uh, I, I have an inheritance that, that I obtained. Amen? And, and, and really, it is, 
The, the scary part about having an inheritance is that God actually pre-planned, amen, for me to have an inheritance. He predestined my, my path to cross, uh, to, uh, uh, to come to a place where I would just say, you know what, I need Jesus, amen, I need Jesus. And uh, uh, I, I was reading, and uh, I want to look at that for a second, but Job, Job 38, verses 1 through 4, and then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up the loins, now thy loins like a man, and I will demand of thee and to answer uh, thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if you, if you have understanding. Isn't it powerful to think about the fact that that is as great as my mind is, as, as awesome as my understanding is of, of, of Scripture and of the Word of God, uh, God, God is speaking even to Job, and I think, I think we can understand that a little bit in our own life, that we, we don't have all the answers, amen? I, I don't even know, uh, I wasn't there when God spoke the world into existence. I wasn't there when, when the foundation of the world was laid. I wasn't there when He placed the cornerstone, Amen. I wasn't there when, when, when all the amazing things that we see in, uh, around us were, were made. I wasn't there. It, it's, it's true. I want you to th think about this. It's true that God, God created the earth. Amen? The, the, the very earth that we stand on, God created it. Amen? I want you to think about that. It's a tangible uh, uh, thing. But did God create the earth? Yes or no? I, I said all that to, to ask a question. Did God create it? Yes or no? Because if you say yes, that, that automatically brings you to a different place. If you say no, it, it brings you to another place. Amen? So I, I want to I declare to you this morning that I believe that God created earth. Amen? He created the ground that I stand on this morning. Matter of fact, I cannot stand up on anything other than the ground that I'm standing on. Amen? And God is the one that created it. Amen? He, he is the one that's so much smarter than me because I have to come to a place this morning as a Christian to be, to be a believer. I must believe Genesis 1, verse 1, which says, in the beginning, God. Amen? In the beginning, God. And so if if I can say that this morning, that I believe that there is a God and I do believe that He is a creator, I can under, also come to a place where I understand, right, in my little brain, that God predestined, amen, God planned for me to be standing behind this pulpit this morning, amen? I believe Genesis 1-1. I believe that there is a God. I believe that He is a creator, amen? And I declare that to you this morning. If you... <laughs> If you believe, though, this morning that we literally are standing on the Word of God, if you believe this morning that you're literally standing on the Word and that God literally spoke, right? And that the, the Word literally went out of God's mouth, all right, and accomplished something, amen? If you can actually believe that with me this morning, okay, then, then it, seems, uh, it's, <laughs> it seems logical to me to say that maybe the Word became flesh. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus also came forth from the Word from God, right? John 1 and verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? So the Word of God has power. Amen? The Word of God has power. And that, 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 that brings me to the place where I can logically assume, right, that, that it, it brings me to a place to remember that the same God that would send his word would also make a spiritual provision for my life. Amen? If he made a physical, natural uh, provision for us as human beings to be able to breathe in and exhale and to be standing and walking and jumping and talking and doing and building and doing whatever we did, if he did it naturally, it's also important to understand that he did it spiritually for us. Amen? spiritually it's it's logical this morning <laughs> john john 1 uh, verse 12 through 14 it says it says but as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of god amen if if we receive it's a simple simple thing to say jesus come into my heart come and make come and be lord amen it's simple to say that but but if we receive him he gives us power to become sons amen 
And if I become a son, I then have an inheritance. Amen? I have an inheritance. And so, he, it, I want to keep reading though, because it says in verse 13, which were born not of blood. Amen? It says, I wasn't, I wasn't born, uh, I'm not a blood relative. Amen? Necessarily, but I, I am a blood relative through the blood of Jesus Christ but not of the will of flesh, right? Because my, my mom and dad decided to have me, amen? <laughs> they decided to have me, but, but God, God chose me, not, not of the will of man, but of God. So it is the will of God, uh, it's important for you to understand this, it's, it's the will of God for us to find him, amen? He's looking for us, he wants us to find him, amen? And he wants us to become something, amen? He wants us to become a son, amen? He wants us to, to, to take hold of our inheritance. And then that very famous verse in 14, John 1 verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. His name was Jesus, amen? And, and it was the will of God for the word to be made flesh. It's, it's powerful because it was God's will to send his son, amen, to die on a cross for us some 2,000 years ago. It was his will, it was his plan. It was his predestined plan for our life, amen? Full of grace and truth. I love that, that word. because uh, And we beheld his glory and his glory uh, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And if you notice that verse, grace and truth are little g and little t, okay? Which, which is powerful because that means the word had flesh in it, amen? There was flesh. That means that, that God came in the flesh, amen? Otherwise, it would be the big G grace or the big T truth, but the flesh, amen? Uh, God put on flesh. Jesus put on flesh. Jesus walked around just like us. He was not di uh, any different from us because he you pinch him and he would bleed or, or say, ow. <laughs> you know, he said, ow, and he had dirty feet and he had got tired just like we did and he got discouraged at times probably and he got had friends that didn't like him sometimes and he had hit issues, that, that the same kind of issues that we had. You know, he had to watch what he ate sometimes probably. And uh, there, was, there was a lot of things that went on in his life that are very similar to what we had. Otherwise... God would not, Jesus would not know what it's like to be you or I. And it's important to know that he's, he, he, he was not unacquainted with our infirmities. Amen? The word says. Uh, it, it's powerful to know that. Amen? Uh, I have an inheritance that is predestined for me, that nobody can take away from me, that, that is held captive for me. Amen? I don't have to worry about someone taking my stuff. And I don't have to worry about someone getting stuff that's better than my stuff or different than my stuff or not like my stuff because I have my own stuff. Amen? I, I have it and it's secure in God. I have an inheritance this morning. Let, let me move on to counsel this morning. Counsel. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 11, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Uh, for as the heavens are higher than the earth... Isn't it, isn't it so awesome to think about God is smarter than us? Amen? God is smarter than you. God is smarter than me. God is smarter than the smartest person in all of the world. He's smarter than whoever that is with the highest IQ. God is smarter than all those, those people because his ways are not my ways. His, his thoughts are not my thoughts. Amen? And, and as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are uh, my ways higher than, than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven... Returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth the bud. I'm, I'm just rehearsing this verse because I've already preached this verse, and you guys already know this verse, but I'm just bringing it back to your mind because in Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 11, I'm bringing it back to your mind because I want you to think about the fact that the Word of God goes out like drops of rain, like, like flakes of, of snow, and it's going to accomplish exactly what it's supposed to do in that the Word is powerful this morning. The, the counsel of God is powerful this morning, and He's always, always, always working on changing you or I. Amen? He's working on changing you and I. He, it doesn't come back. It, it, the, the, in verse 11, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 11 says, So shall that word that be that goeth forth out of, out of my mouth. Right? So shall my word be as it goeth out of my mouth. See, our word, when we speak, uh, is, is, is because we are created in the image of God, we have ability to create things. Right? We speak things, and if we speak it long enough, we begin to believe it. 
and we begin to act on it, and we begin to do it, and we begin to think it's truth. Amen? And Jesus, uh, and God's word goes, goes out of his mouth and doesn't come back to him without creating or accomplishing the thing he sends it to do. Amen? So when God sends a word to us, he's trying to accomplish something in our life. Amen? Matter of fact, it will happen. When God speaks it, it will happen. Right? Uh, <laughs> my, I love that song. Uh, my, my praise is a weapon, and I could, I could do it, but, but my, my victory has a name, right? And his name is Jesus this morning. Amen? My victory in my life over my circumstance has a name. It's, his name is Jesus. And I, my, that's my inheritance, but it's also the spoken word of God gone forth to deliver me. Amen? It's my, my victory. My victory has a name. His name is Jesus this morning. Amen? Uh, I, I love this, this, this thought, okay, uh, where, 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 where we have our purpose and we have something working in, in, a, in our life and it's going to bring forth a praise. Amen? So there's, there's a purpose for my life. Everybody can say that I have a purpose for my life. Amen? I have a purpose for my life. But I'm going to tell you that, that God is working all of that together, right? I love that, that verse in uh, Romans 8, 28 that everybody knows, but, but God is working it, right? There's stuff working in my life right now. There's, there's circumstances working. I mean, I've been married for 33 years, and she's working on me, amen? You should have seen me before. I mean, God is, God is working on me through, through my relationships. He's working on me through my finances. He's working on me through, through my, my, uh, my, the environment around me. He's working on me because I have a purpose, amen? There's a purpose for all of this, and, and it's for, for me to come to a place where I can say, I give you the praise, God, amen? Because that's what God is looking for. He's looking for, for, for the purpose of my life, <laughs> that working in my life is to bring me to a place where I can praise him, amen? <laughs> Will you or won't you? See, because that's really what it is. Will you or won't you? Often we won't praise God because we're too proud. Often we won't praise God because we don't see him. Often we won't praise God because we're just, we just think we're going to do it our own way. You know, this, this past week I had this same situation happen in my life. I went to this meeting. I sat in this meeting. I was thinking this was going to happen. Guess what? None of that happened. Nothing happened the way I thought it was going to happen. My expectation was... Was, was blown out of the water. I was like, this was my expectation, and this happened. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And then I said to, I said to God, I blamed God for a moment. I said, God, I said, I thought this was going to be it. And, and you know what? God, God doesn't need it, that, whatever I thought it was to happen for, for something good to be happening in my life because maybe God is doing good things in my life right now in the middle of all of that and maybe he's trying to work me to a place where I'll just praise him whether I got it or whether I don't got it whether I, I love it or whether I don't love it okay well, isn't it time for somebody maybe it's just me to stand up and say you know what I just love you God I just worship you God I just think you're worthy I just think you're great I just think you're awesome I just think you're the creator I just think you might be smarter than me and I just think you might be bringing me to a place where I can give you praise no matter what the circumstances is because you are God. You're the creator. He can give me money. He can take money away. He can bring people. He can take people away. He can give us buildings. He cannot give us buildings. It really doesn't matter. What matters is my, my heart says, I worship you. That's my purpose this morning. This stuff will pass away, but God's word will never pass away, it says. Amen? Woo! I want to bring this sentence back, okay? I said this sentence. I, don't, I, I was trying to find the message. I couldn't figure out the message that I said it in because it just came out of my spirit when I, was, when I was sitting thinking about that. We cannot see in the middle what God will do in the end. Amen? I can't see the, the end from here. Amen? I can't even... I try to remember the, the beginning, but I'm telling you, when I was... Born, I don't remember anything till I was like four years old. So there's like an empty four year four year space in my life, and then I only remember the highlights of all of the stuff behind me. But I'm going to tell you, I can't see the end now either. I'm in the middle, and I, wherever God is taking me, I know it's going to be good because God is good, and He only does good things. Romans eight twenty eight. He's going to work it all out for good. Amen. I cannot see in the middle what God will do in the end. 
counsel. Job 1, verses 6 through 8. <laughs> I love this story, and I was, I was looking at this this week. And now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and an upright man that feareth God and escheweth evil. <laughs> I want to want to show you something. The, the, the sons of God, the sons are not cap, his sons are not capitalized. It's it's a little s. Okay? And so that means that it was not Jesus he was talking about. That means God was talking to his creation, okay? So, so God was having a meeting in heaven with his creation, amen? I think it's really powerful. And by the sounds of it, it didn't just happen one time. This is something that would go on repeatedly in heaven, amen? And so, so the sons are create creatures, okay? <laughs> can, can I stretch you just a little bit? Maybe it's just like going to church on Sunday, <laughs> if you were really stretch it just a little bit. But isn't that the purpose of coming here this morning, is to meet with God? Isn't that the purpose of gathering ourselves together? It's like, I, I want to hear Pastor ever preach. No, I want to worship God. No, I want to hear from God. No, I want to experience the presence of God in my life. Amen? I want, to, I want to gather together. And I think that's kind of the purpose of what God did. And he didn't do it just one time. I think he did it many times. But he, he gathered everybody together. And I was, I was thinking about that thought. The, the fact that maybe there was a church service in heaven. And Satan himself was invited. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, here comes the devil right into the church service, right? And, then, and I thought about the fact that, isn't it, isn't it interesting that in every single person in the Bible, every big name person, okay, like Moses, okay, God communed with Moses. As a matter of fact, Moses and God would have arguments <laughs> about what was going on. Like God would say, from the burning bush, he would say, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And Moses would say, but, 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 but I can't talk, 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 okay? I can't talk. And, and God would say, but I'm the creator. I'm the one that created the tongue. I'm the one that created your voice. I'm the one, I can help you. And he's like, I can't go, go by myself. And so then he would get, get, get Aaron to go with me. And so then Aaron would go, he got, finally got Aaron to go. But then it's like, I, I found it interesting though, in Moses' life, you really look at it. Moses argued with God at the beginning. And then at the end of Moses' life, he wouldn't stop talking. He talked for like almost three chapters of the Bible because he, he, he learned how to talk. But he, he, I don't know, maybe he didn't really want to die either but he just kept on talking and he kept talking 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 okay and then you can look at Abraham Abraham talked with God and actually Abraham and God uh, argued a little bit about about maybe if there's just 50 maybe there's just 40 maybe if there's just 30 maybe there's 20 maybe if there's only 10 God would you just spare them and God you know he communed with God God loves I think to commune with us this morning I think it's in his nature matter of fact if you know the character of God you would know that he wants to talk to us this morning that's the purpose that's the reason we're here amen is to hear a word from God is to commune with him in some way so that I can be different you can be different we can be different and we can become who he wants us to be so that we can uh, manifest the purpose of our life and our walk with him to praise and glory of God amen 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 hmm. I'm getting wound up just a little bit counsel Counsel. I want you to think about counsel. Amen? Counsel. Would you go to church <laughs> if God was going to brag on you <laughs> and say, hey devil, have you seen my servant Job? <laughs> have you ever thought about this? Like, dun, dun, dun. Okay? And then I, I thought to myself, Job was righteous. Job was, let's take that us off and just say right okay is it possible that God knew what Job needed in his life 
even though Job didn't want what God was going <laughs> to show him up to. You know, here devil, here devil, check out Job. But see, we, don't, we always think about how bad that must have been for Job to go through all of that. But God was the one that was working all things together for good in Job's life for the good of him, amen? So that we could read and, and understand that maybe Job, okay? <laughs> maybe Pastor Everett, maybe fill in your name. Maybe God is bragging on you this morning because he wants to perfect that which is concerning in you, amen? So that you can come to a place and you can lift your hands and say, you know what, I don't have any money, I don't have any friends, I don't have nothing, I don't have any, but I got Jesus, amen? And I'm gonna worship him and him alone. Would you go to church this morning if God was gonna pick on you? Would you go? Would you go? Amen? It sounds just like church to me, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, let's go up before God. Hey, the sons of God. And he says, hey, devil, come here. Psst. Have you seen my servant, Job? Amen? <laughs> can, I, can I just say one more thing? Right? Let me, let me just say this. We can be so right that we're wrong. Amen? We can be, we can be so right that we're wrong. <laughs> if my right <laughs> seems wrong, I'll worship him anyways. Amen? Because I know that God is God. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Let me give you another word, believed. I, the, the word is, uh, if, if you look in, in at where I, I pulled belief from, uh, it, it's actually three parts. It's trusted, believed, and sealed. Trusted, believed, and sealed. And so if you look at those three words, Ephesians 4, and we're just going to go up a few verses, Ephesians 1, 4 through 6 says, according as he hath chosen us, yes, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, before God created, he chose us, amen, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, in love. And then that's yes, amen, that's a yes. I want to be holy and without blame in God, in Christ Jesus, right, in love. And then there's that, there's that colon right there again uh, uh, that says having predestined us, predestined, he, he predetermined my destination, amen. He knew where I would be today, amen? Uh, and, and what his plan is, what God's plan is, having predestined us unto the adoption of children, right? By Jesus Christ to himself. So because of Christ, we're, we're being adopted. It's the will of God. Okay, let me just keep reading. According to his, the good pleasure of his will, it says, right? So it is God's pleasure to adopt us, his children, amen? Amen? It's, it's his pleasure to adopt. It's his plan for us to be adopted. Amen? Uh, to the praise, uh, in verse 6, in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace. <laughs> so I give, I give praise to the, and glory to the grace of God that I have experienced because I don't deserve it. I haven't earned it. I haven't, I haven't earned my inheritance. I haven't earned it at all. I don't, I, I, I've got, I receive it by grace. Amen? wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Beloved. We're accepted in the beloved by the grace of God according to the will of God. Amen? So there's, I'm connecting some dots for us. Amen? And uh, it's so, so it's, it's a glorious grace that we are accepted into the beloved. Amen? It's a glorious grace that we are accepted into the beloved. Amen? It's a glorious grace that we are accepted into the beloved. Uh, the counsel of, of, of the will of God. The counsel of the will. And I put a question mark after that because I don't always know necessarily what his will is for my life. Okay? I have to, I have to walk it out. Amen? I have to get up every single morning. I got to say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Be graceful to me. Right? I'm a sinner. 
I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in need of you today. I, would you walk with me today? Would you be my God today? Would you, would you help me to, to, to experience you today as I go to work? Would you help me to, to smile when I don't feel like smiling? Would you help me to be happy? Because I have you in my life. Amen? Uh, so, to, think about this. God's will, I, I want you to think about this, is to save, to create, and to love. That's his will. It's his will. And we can go back, uh, uh, we can go back and look uh, in, in lots of things, lots of stories in the Bible. But let me just give you one, okay? Uh, it, it's, it's the ark. Noah was building an ark. He spent like 100 years, okay? And he was standing out there in the middle of a field by himself. He was outstanding in his field, amen, building an ark. And he was building an ark for the, for the purpose was to save. But he was preaching as he was building an ark. People were not listening to him, but he was preaching anyways. And, 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 and one day, animals two by two started coming and getting in the ark. And guess what happened? Uh, at, on, the, on the day when, when the fountain of the earth broke, broke free, the word says, God reached down and sealed the door himself. Amen? He sealed the door. His purpose was to seal in eight souls and a bunch of animals, okay? And the purpose was to save, right? He was trying to save us, amen? Amen? I think that's powerful. To save, to create, and to love. That's his, that's his will. Uh, so the first, first word in the, in, of the trifecta words, okay, is trust. Trust in God, even though we don't understand him all the time, but we know his character. Amen? We can know his character as a Christian. Right? Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 1 says what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Do you trust God? <laughs> Do you trust him? Because, because it's one thing to say, I have faith in God, but let me ask you, do you trust him? Because see, uh, it, faith is really a, another word for trust. I, I don't understand, because see, I can't see faith, right? But you can see my faith in how I trust God, amen? That's what, that's what you can see. So you can see my faith in my trust towards God, amen? In my ability to walk out where it doesn't seem like it makes sense, amen? So, so, so uh, <laughs> a, a life... Hmm. See, because this is really where it is. Without faith, it's impossible to please God for those that come to him must first believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who dil diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But, but faith, faith is, is, it's the same thing. Jesus gave his life. He's asking us to give our life. Amen? Life for life. I say that many times. But, but it's a heart thing, right? Uh, uh, my, I... I Life for life, uh, the giver gave, Jesus gave, and then I, I receive, and my purpose is to give, amen? Because I have received, I now give my life, amen, to him, amen? Then uh, let me give you the second word, believe. Uh, I, I just like this, believe like a believer. Believe like a believer, because it's really a heart thing, and we, we've, we know this verse, uh, uh, Romans 10, 6 through 10, I, I always like to go just to Romans 10, 10, but if you look at 6, it says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Let me pause there. The righteousness which is of faith, because I receive my, 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 my salvation by faith, by placing my trust in God, amen? So I, I become a believer when I trust in him, amen? And it's, it's the righteousness which I receive by faith, not by works of righteousness which I have done, not by anything that I have worked out in my own life, Amen? But, but, by, but by faith that I receive it. Say, say not within thy heart who shall ascend up who, in heaven who shall, uh, that is to bring Christ down, or who shall descend and eat, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh, even in verse 8, I'm in Romans 10, I'm going really quickly. Romans 10, verse 8 says, For what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. It is the word of faith which we preach. So faith. Faith. It's by placing my trust in him. And then, and then it says in verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart we believe 
unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I cannot take it in my heart and not speak it out of my mouth. I, I, have, to, I have to speak out of my mouth. Out of my mouth comes what's in my heart. It's really powerful. And then, and then I want to give you, because we must believe, we must trust, right? I, I, I like to change it from faith to trust, because trust something we can understand. I got to trust in God. I got to put my faith in him. I trust him. And then I must believe I'm like a believer. And then, I, and then God seals me. Amen. And, and when we come into worship with God, when we come into a place and a position of worship, often the presence of God comes. Amen. And when it comes into our life, it's sealing us. Amen. It's, it's a confirmation this morning. It's a confirmation that I am his and he is mine. Amen? And it's also uh, an awesome thing to think about that the creative power, when I feel the presence of God, he is creating something new in me. Amen? And we should get excited about that. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm almost done. I, I, went, I went really fast and over a lot there. I, I, I probably should have slowed down some. But, but he comes to seal us. Amen? And the purpose is to save. The Spirit is to seal us and to save us. Trust, believed, and seal. Let, let me just wrap, wrap up what I'm saying today. Amen. I, I, want, to, I want to wrap up the... Uh, the uh, I, want to, I want... Last Thursday, I was preaching a message. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but I put on a Packers jersey. Okay, and I am a Bear fan. Okay, and I didn't. I did it because uh, because you know the Bears are losers, and sometimes we have to uh, do things. But I put on the the jersey. Okay, and I didn't realize the trouble that I would have putting on a jersey. From the uh, because the reason why there's such a, a trouble there is because of the rivalry though that exists between Bear fans and Packer fans. Okay, and 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 so when I put on the jersey, I was like, it's not just a shirt, right? It's just a shirt. It's just a game. Football is just a game. And I and I thought to myself, those two statements are true. But why do I feel this way? And I was, I was, I was in turmoil about it. And then I preached a message. And the whole time I preached a message, this turmoil was going on inside of me. I don't know. Maybe you've done that before. I don't know. Uh, but you get this, this turmoil going on because you're trying to be nice. But you can't be nice because of what's going on inside of you. Right? And so I, I wrote down, I wrote down this 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 sentence, okay? And this sentence is for me. It may not be for you. But my internal conflict has eternal consequences. My, my, let me say it like this. Our internal conflict has eternal consequences. And, and see, I think that the rub is this. This is the rub. If I am a Christian and I try to put on the world and I start talking about the world but what's inside me is not of the world why is it that there's no rub there anymore you know this because maybe it's just it's just for me I'm, I'll look and put the mirror here if 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 what is in me is just like what's out here what's the problem See, but if what's in me is different than what's out there, then, then I'm maybe okay. But I'm going to tell you right now this morning, actually Joanne said this. She, I wrote this down. She was talking the other day, and, and I said, I'm going to write that down. So I wrote this down. She said, uh, you, have, <laughs> you have to get something in order to get something else. That's what she said, Joanne. Okay. You have to get something in order to get something else, right? So if you, if you, if you want uh, pizza, you got to go pick up the pizza, right? 
And if you're hungry for pizza, you have to eat the pizza. You just can't go pick the pizza up because you'll never get to taste the pizza inside your, your belly and you'll never get full and you'll never say, oh, I, I'm, I'm not full, I'm not hungry for pizza anymore. But it's the same thing's true with our Christian walk. If we're going to receive Christ in us, it should be different from what's else. It should be like putting on a Packer jersey when you're a Bear fan, okay? There should be a, 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 a rub there. There should be a, a controversy in, in our life because, because what God is trying to do is not going to be comfortable with what you are inside. Amen? That's the truth. And I'm going to tell you that it's time for us, amen, to begin to get uncomfortable so that, so that God can, can finish the work that he has begun in our life because he wants to finish something in us. And I want to, I want to be a finisher. I want, I don't want, I'm not happy, honestly. I am not happy going this far. I want to finish the job. Amen? I, I'm a finisher. I'm going to stick right with it. I'm going to stay right on my knees. I'm going to keep taking the word of God in every day because I want him to finish what he started in me. Can I, can I give you a the, the title of this message is Battle of Wills. Battle of Wills. See, because God's will will prevail. God's will will prevail in my life, not my will. Because it's his will be done, not Pastor Everett's will be done. Amen? And so, so <laughs> I wrote this down. <laughs> What fiery passion, this came from a Packers jersey, by the way. What fire, fiery passion we have inside of us to be steadily in defense of our position. Relationally, professionally, spiritually, in every area of our life. Are you willing to confront that inside of you? Amen? It's difficult for us to even contemplate a reality that, that actually exists in which we are wrong. <laughs> Go back to Job. Go back to Job. Job gave offerings. Job was upright in all of his way. God had blessed him. He had much stuff. So, so I don't want to be so right that I'm wrong. Amen? I am unwilling to go through the rest of my life being right. Amen? I want the will of God to come and, and train, change my life. I have an exercise for you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're wrong. <laughs> Turn to your other neighbor and say, you're wrong. <laughs> you see how easy that was? <laughs> but did you receive it? But did you receive it? <laughs> uh, let, me, let me just give it one more verse and I'll be done. Okay? One more verse. Hebrews 4.10 For he that has, is entered into his rest he also hath ceased from his own works comma as God did from his. So when God was creating <laughs> he stopped working right? Because he had finished the job. And that, my friends, is rest defined, okay? Rest is defined when I stop trying to do it my way. And I am preaching to myself right now, amen? I'm always trying to do it my own way. I've got the best way, amen, because it's my way, amen? You, got, you might have a way too, but your way is not like my way, amen? So, so... <laughs> It's in, no, I, I got to give you this one more thing. It is in our DNA. It's in our DNA to rest. But we have to give up our own works. Amen? Hmm. Amen? Yes. Hmm. After the counsel of his own will. Amen? Let me just pray for you. If you would, stand with me. I'm going to close this up because I'm going to keep talking. You say, no, Pastor Ever, don't talk no more. <laughs> Let me just pray. 
Father, today, Lord, we, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for, for the message, God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you, you are working in our, in our lives today, God. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come to church this morning, Lord, to come and, and to reason with you, Lord, to come and talk with you, to come and experience you, Lord, in a great way. And Lord, we ask that you would come and be Lord of our life. Come and sit on the throne of our heart this morning. And Lord, we want to live our life after the counsel of your will. So Lord, we look for your purpose as we take our place. Lord, in our place is to simply worship you. Lord, we just give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all of our life, Lord. We give you the, the past, we give you the future, and Lord, we stand right here in the middle today, not seeing the end, but Lord, we take our eyes off of the past, and we look to you this morning, and we say, come and be Lord. And Lord, we take off the Packers jersey today, and the, and the Bears jersey, and the rivalry that we have inside of us that says, I know the way better than you. My expectation is not upon my own will anymore, Lord. And I sit down and I rest today knowing that you're working it all out for my good. You're working it all out, God. And I rest this morning knowing that you love me, knowing that you have called me up out of whatever it is, whatever those things are. We all have them. We, 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 we turn our face from them. And we say, Jesus, we rest. I rest my case. I rest my case. I submit to you. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I give you my life. I give you my ministry. I give you my attitude, Lord. I give you my obedience. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, can we say amen together? Amen. Amen. Mm. The battle is over. You know, <laughs> I printed this poster off for my, my son. It says, the war is over. And I, I seen a picture the other day of him and his son and his wife, and they, in the background was that poster, and the war is over. Amen? Because I, I rest. Amen? I rest. The war is over. Amen? It's no longer a battle of wills because I'm not fighting anymore. Amen? God is good. God bless you and keep you. Appreciate every one of you. Love you guys. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Amen.